In today's Tech News Spotlight, we're featuring Grab, one of Southeast Asia's largest ride-hailing apps, if not the biggest. We'll take a look at the rise of Grab as a company, from its humble beginnings as a taxi booking app to a potential IPO this year that could see the company raising at least two billion U.S. dollars, the largest overseas share offering by a Southeast Asian company. My name is Angeline, and this is the Daily Watch. What is Grab? Grab is a Singapore-based technology company offering ride-hailing transport services, food delivery, and payment solutions via its mobile app. It currently operates in Southeast Asia and Japan, serving more than 187 million users in over 330 cities. Today, it has become the region's most valuable startup worth more than $16 billion. How did Grab begin? Grab was initially conceived as a college project by founder Anthony Tan, who was later joined by classmate Tan Hui Ling, who spun the idea while pursuing MBA at Harvard Business School. They bagged 25,000 US dollars in prize money after coming second at the Harvard Business Plan competition in 2011. In 2012, they launched a company in Malaysia as My Taxi, which then became Grab Taxi just a year before Uber launched its ride-hailing service in Singapore and two years after Gojek in Indonesia. In 2014, the company moved its headquarters to Singapore. They started a company well aware of the chaotic and unorganized scene the Southeast Asian country's transportation sector faced. However, it wasn't that easy to sign up drivers in the beginning. Drivers were not necessarily tech savvy and they rejected the new concept. They've had to meet drivers at their local hangout places and pitch to them one by one. Finally, after several rejections, one taxi company with 30 taxis was willing to give it a shot. The following year, Grab Taxi expanded to the Philippines, Singapore, and Thailand. In 2014, Grab Taxi further continued its growth and expansion to new countries by launching in Ho Chi Minh City in Vietnam and Jakarta in Indonesia. They will later add Grab Car, an alternative form of transportation that uses personal cars instead of taxis, Grab Bike for motorcycle service rides, and Grab Car Plus, a service that provides a fleet of higher-end cars. One of its biggest moments came in 2018 when it acquired its rival Uber's entire ride-hailing service in the region. In this deal, Grab controlled all Uber operations in countries like Cambodia, Malaysia, Vietnam, the Philippines, Singapore, Indonesia, Thailand, and Myanmar. In return, Uber got a 27.5% stake in Grab, which already has a valuation in several billion dollars. Fast forward to 2021, Grab has taken its mobile-based ride-hailing service to an exponential growth across Southeast Asia. What are Grab's businesses? Grab has adopted the super app model, which allows it to enter multiple consumer services sectors such as food ordering, on-demand video platform, ticket purchasing, grocery shopping, hotel booking services, and financial services. In November 2016, Grab launched GrabPay Payment Service as a digital payment service among third-party merchants, allowing users to use the app for purchases outside of ride-hailing. In December 2016, Grab launched Grab Rewards Rewards Program. In April 2017, Grab confirmed the acquisition of Indonesian online payment startup Kudo. The Kudo platform was integrated with Grab's payment system and was Grab's initial step into expanding into fintech services. In 2018, Grab launched Grab Food Food Delivery Service and Grab Express Courier Service. In the same year, they also launched Grab Financial, a financial arm of the company which offers payments, insurance, and financing services. Then, they invested in Indonesian conglomerate Lipa Group's OVO platform to compete against rival Gojek. OVO is Indonesia's leading digital e-payment platform. In December of the same year, they launched the Grab Club subscription program. Grab is actively looking to enter into new industry verticals. In April 2019, it entered into four more industries, which were ticket purchasing, hotel booking, on-demand video streaming, and trip planning. In December 2020, Grab was granted a digital bank license from Singapore together with Singtel as a consortium that would allow Grab Singtel to expand their financial services offerings. In January 2021, Grab Financial Group, the company's financial services unit, raised more than $300 million from South Korea's Hanwha Asset Management. How big is Grab? To date, Grab has raised a total of 10.1 billion US dollars funds and is valued at 16 billion US dollars. The company counts among its backers well-known investors such as SoftBank. 
In August 2020, Grab reportedly raised 200 million US dollars from South Korean private equity firm Stick Investments. This followed a 1 billion US dollars fundraise from SoftBank Fish and Fund in 2019. What's next for Grab? In recent months, multiple reports suggest that Grab was close to merging its operations with Gojek. However, the two rivals reached an impasse late last year. Meanwhile, Gojek and Indonesian e-commerce leader Tokopedia are in advance talks for an $8 billion merger ahead of a potential dual listing in Jakarta and the United States. With the fallout of the Grab Gojek merger, sources says that Grab is exploring the listing in the United States this year, encouraged by robust investor appetite for IPOs. The public offering could see Grab raising at least $2 billion US dollars. This would likely make Grab the largest overseas share offering by a Southeast Asian company after C-Group's $1 billion US dollar IPO in 2017. That's it for today. If you liked today's video or learned anything new, press the like button, subscribe and ring the bell to get the latest content from The Daily Watch. See you next time.